Welcome to this week's Big 12 Report presented by Dr. Pepper. I'm Wendell Barnhouse, Big12Sports.com correspondent. This week, my co-host is Cassandra Novi. Well, Wendell, this next issue is a little bit of a sore subject for me from being an MU graduate. The Jayhawks have advanced to their 14th Final Four, and it's the second time in the Bill Self era. But I guess my subconscious disagrees with me because I wore Jayhawk blue today. Good for you. Well, the Jayhawks will face number two Ohio State on Saturday, and how do you think this whole game is going to play out, and what's the road that the Jayhawks have taken to get where they're at now? Well, you know, this Final Four, as you mentioned, it's the 14th Final Four for Kansas. I think it's probably the most unexpected trip to the Final Four this program has made outside of 1988 when Danny and the Miracles went. Of course, we all know how that turned out. Now, the Jayhawks lost four starters from last season's 35-3 and three team. That reached the Elite Eight. Now, with just a seven-man rotation and only one proven player, senior point guard Tyshawn Taylor returning, the Jayhawks still made it to New Orleans. Now, Cass, as you mentioned, the Ohio State game gets the number two seed. They're playing a team that they beat in mid-December, 78-67, uh, a game that was in Lawrence. However, Jared Sullinger, the Buckeyes' leading scorer and rebounder, he didn't play in that game because of a back injury. He will be playing Saturday. The winner of the Kansas-Ohio State game will face the winner of Kentucky-Louisville Monday night for the national championship. Now, if you know anything about basketball, you know Kentucky-Louisville semifinal is between two rivals that hate each other. Now, the winner of that game might be a little bit drained come Monday, so if Kansas is playing in that championship game, could be a factor, who knows. And moving on over to the women, the Baylor Lady Bears are two away from a perfect 40-0 season and two games away from the national championship title. Now the Big 12 had another team in the Final Four. Oklahoma State reached the Final Four at the WNIT, which was the first in program history. Now Baylor faces number one seed Stanford on Saturday. How do you think the Bears are gonna do facing Stanford? That is going to be a very tough game. You know, and to get there, they won a regional final in Odyssey Sims a year ago as a freshman in the regional final in Dallas against Texas A&M. Two points, missed all six of her shots. In the regional final in Des Moines Monday night, she more than made up for that. Sims made sure the Lady Bears made it to this season's Final Four. She scored a season-high 27 points as Baylor knocked off number two seed Tennessee 77-58 Monday night in Des Moines. Now it's on to Denver for the Lady Bears and as you mentioned, cast a 38-0 record. Baylor's going to go up against Stanford, a number one seed. Stanford has won 32 consecutive games. Its only loss came to Connecticut really early in the season. Now this is a third consecutive year that Stanford will be meeting a Big 12 team in a Final Four semifinal. It's all number one seeds at this Final Four, first time that's happened since 1989. Over on the other side of the bracket, it'll be number one seed Connecticut against number one seed Notre Dame. The winner of Sunday's games will meet Tuesday night for the championship in Denver. Hopefully, we'll see Baylor playing in that game. Yes, and that would be something that's definitely shout out worthy. But what else around the conference has caught your eye this past week? Well, get back to basketball and Baylor, something that's shout out worthy. Just over a week ago, I was in Bowling Green, Ohio, covering Baylor. And I got to witness history when Brittany Griner became the second player to dunk in a women's NCAA tournament game. In the Sweet 16 victory over Georgia Tech, Griner made history again when she slammed down this two-hander on a breakaway. It was the seventh dunk of her career. And congrats to Oklahoma for winning the Big 12 Gymnastics Championship. The Sooners won their fifth Big 12 Gymnastics Championship and they're ranked second nationally. Oklahoma finished ahead of Iowa State and Missouri, which tied for second. Oklahoma senior Megan Ferguson won titles on bars and beam. Teammate Bree Olson captured the all-around title. She's the first Oklahoma gymnast to do that since 2006. Missouri's Mary Burke was named Big 12 Gymnast of the Year, and OU's KJ Kindler was named Coach of the Year for the sixth time and third as the Sooners coach. Oklahoma, Iowa State, and Missouri all have qualified for the NCAA Regionals that will be held the first weekend in April. For my final shout out, let's dive into the pool. Texas, for the fifth straight season, finished in the top two nationally in the NCAA Men's Swimming and Diving Championships that were wrapped up on Saturday. The Longhorns finished second to California. Texas A&M finished 13th and Missouri 19th. The Big 12 had 27 athletes earn All-America honors, 16 from Texas, 10 from A&M, and one from Missouri. UT's Jimmy Fagan won the national championship in the 50 and 100 yard freestyle races, and Dax Hill won the 200 freestyle, while Drew Livingston took the one meter diving title. And congratulations to all the athletes and teams that have made it to postseason and have wrapped up their sports. Well, that wraps things up for this week. If you'd like to stay connected to the Big 12, you can find us on Facebook or hit us up on Twitter. For Wendell Barnhouse, I'm Cassandra Novi, and we'll see you next week.